Hey everybody, in this video I'll be showing off our new area load type called column wind loads. So it's been a bit of a while since we've um, visited area loads. So let's take a quick recap as to what these are. So in the past we had one way closed area loads, one way open area loads, two way area loads, and our newest one is column wind loads. So one of the difficulty thi one of the difficulties with some of the previous area loads that we've developed was that you had to have a closed area whether you were developing um, one way or two way area loads. So there was a circumstance where you wanted to be able to apply an area load but not have one side closed off. So in this kind of situation, you are modeling a closed type of wind load where for example you have a closed wall structure um, support supported by um, these these columns so that's where the name comes from that's why we um, assign this type of column wind load so let's take a look at an example here I go into the area loads menu and I select the column wind load now I select three to four nodes to bound the plane. So if you're ever confused as to what each of these terms mean, you can hover over the tooltip <coughs> to get a bit of a description. So I'm going to select four nodes to be able to select the columns along this wall. So I'm going to select 18, 21, 22, and 6. Now for the elevations, you can step the elevations. So if you take a look at this uh, explanation here, you enter comma separated elevations and the elevations are always in the global y-axis. So this global y-axis tells us that is the elevation direction. And this matches with the pressure magnitudes. So we're going to do some co comma separated values for the elevations that we're after. Now we can see that our uh, our y values start at 0 here. It then goes to 10, 20, and uh, 29.5. So I'm going to start at, say, 0. And then we can do... Uh, you can enter any kind of values here for your elevation. So say maybe 7, 12, 23, and 30. So this... Uh, I'll... I'll Make something a little bit higher than that, so I'll make 35. So this will definitely cover uh, above 29.5 here. So I've selected five points for elevation. So now it's my turn to enter my pressure magnitudes. Now your pressure magnitudes are also comma separated values and they can also be uh, decimals. Now the pressure magnitudes basically go in the middle of these elevation points. So for example, between elevations 0 and 7, um, 0 and 7, uh, if you're working in imperial, this would be 0 to 7 feet. If you're working in um, metric, you'll be 0 to 7 meters. Now, the pressure magnitudes <coughs> I'm going to apply. Uh, so I'm just going to make up some numbers here. So I'm going to pick uh, 11... 23, uh, uh, 30, and 35. So the general rule of thumb is that you have one less pressure magnitude than the elevations because these are elevation points, whereas these are the pressures that go in between these elevation points. So 0 to 7 will be 11, 7 to 12 will be 23, 12 to 23 will be 30, 20 and 25. 23 to 35 will be 35 pressure units. Now the column direction, if you hover over the tooltip, that's the direction of your columns. So <coughs> we give you the flexibility to tell us which direction you consider to be your column direction. So in this example, I consider this direction, this upward direction here from say 18 to 21 to be my column direction. You could have also picked say 17 to 21 or say 10 to 23, <coughs> any of those that gives you this vector direction. So I'm just going to keep it simple by doing 18 uh, comma 21. So it accepts exactly two values here and you have to be node, I you have to be specifying node IDs. As usual, you can also assign us a load group, but I'm just going to leave that alone for now. So I'm going to hit apply. 
and you'll notice I've generated the stepped distributed loads. So effectively what you can see here, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that <coughs> between these different heights, so um, it's a little bit difficult to um, mark out the diff different point here, but between this point and this point, that would definitely have been um, between zero to seven, because you can see this is number 10 here. And between uh, this point and that point, that would have been seven to 12. So it's generated different derivative loads um, from the area load that's applied through the pressure. So this is calculated in the same kind of way as the other area loads, where you basically have a tributary width and you multiply that against the pressure. So what you'll notice uh, is that the end uh, ending distributed loads are slightly smaller than the middle ones because you'll notice that the ending members only have a tributary width up to here, whereas these middle members have a tributary width associated with um, partly this area, so this width here, as well as partly this area, which is that width here. Alrighty, so that was a quick example, um, and this overcomes the previous limitation where you, where you couldn't have an open side like this. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example now. So let's take a look at specifying on these slanted, uh, slanted, slanted uh, roof type planes. So if you can imagine this, maybe it's like a wind load being applied to um, this side of the roof. So you would have specified in the exact same way. Now I'm going to do this process again, going into area loads, selecting column wind load, specifying my bounding nodes of, to my plane. So that would be 21, 35, 38, and 29. Sorry, 22. Oops. So I'll just start that again. 21, <coughs> 21 35, 38, and 22. Now the elevations, again, that's something to consider. So the elevation would start at 29.5 and will go all the way up to 45.5 here. So for my elevations, you can still start at a zero value. It's just that none of those values would be used because your structure um, is higher than those points. So you could still say start at say 20, uh, 35, 40, and 42 and 50. So here I specified five elevation points. So I'm gonna be specifying four pressure magnitudes here. So I'm just gonna make up some numbers again. So 10, 20, 30, 40, just to keep it simple. And now my column direction, this time instead of specifying a vertical um, column direction, I'm gonna say these members here represent my columns. So I'm going to say the direction would have to be 21 to 35. 21 to 35. Again, a, call, a load group can be assigned, but I'm just going to leave that alone for now. I hit apply, and you'll notice that the area loads um, representing the distributed loads are perfectly generated. <coughs> and this saves you a lot of time because being able to calculate a perpendicular um, applied applied uh, distributed load is actually not a simple process if you're working this purely by hand or by spreadsheet. So I hope this illustrates how powerful this could be when applying area loads um, on a slanted roof. Now let's take a quick look at another scenario where you want to be applying um, these area loads onto a triangular area. So I'm going to start this process once more and I'm going to be selecting area loads selecting column wind load and selecting the bounding three nodes instead of four nodes this time. So I'm going to be selecting 31, 35, and 21. <clears throat> now for my elevations. So this elevation starts at 29.5 and this elevation starts at, f sorry, ends at 45.5, just like the other, other side of the roof. So uh, I'm going to pick some like similar values, um, 35, 45, 
sorry, 40 and 50. So again, I selected five elevation points. Of course, you could pick more or less. And I'm going to pick um, some pressure magnitudes. Um, and these pressure magnitudes uh, would have to go in between the points. So I'm going to pick four. So um, I'm just going to make up some numbers 11, 22, 33, and 44. And in the column direction, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm, I want to be selecting um, this as my column direction. So I'm going to pick nodes 52 to 54. I hit apply and you'll notice um, these have been applied and there was some slight scaling as well, which um, doesn't affect it, but it just affects um, the rendering that's displayed on your screen. So if you take a look at this, you will notice that we've now created these different um, distributed loads on these members, offering you the convenience to be adding these kind of loads onto a triangular plane. Notice that the slight difference in this kind of scenario is that we have this column um, in this triangular area as well, as well as this quadrilateral area. We take a slightly conservative approach where we take the tributary widths of this column to be halfway um, of this area and halfway of that area. Sorry, halfway of this uh, width and halfway of this width. So whilst that doesn't represent the exact value, it is considered a conservative value when considering the tributary width um, that's being applied here. This member would be th halfway between of this width, so it'd be this width, half of this, and half of this width here. And this member is similar to the ending member in the sense that it takes half of this it takes half of this full width, so it'll be this width here to half of the width here, so up to here. I hope this has been informative. Thanks for tuning in for this uh, tutorial. I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks and bye for now.